Lord of all. Let every kindred, every tribe on this terrestrial ball. To him all majesty ascribe and crown him Lord of all. To him all majesty ascribe and crown him Lord of all. <clears throat> oh, that with yonder angel throng we at his feet may fall. We'll join the everlasting song and crown him Lord of all. We'll join the everlasting song and crown him Lord of all. Fantastic. Thank you all. We're going to go ahead and have opening prayer now. Uh, if I could... Um, Marcus, if you're able to come open a prayer, please, sir. <clears throat> Our Father, which are in heaven, holy be thy name. We groan and yearn that your kingdom come, Father. This has been a pretty hard time on the brethren this year. We just ask you to intervene in our lives, whatever hardships we have going on. And just help us all to stand in faith <clears throat> until our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ return. Father, my prayer today is to bless all the churches of God to be on one accord. Because we all are searching for that same goal, and that's to be in your kingdom. <clears throat> we just thank you for this opportunity and all you have provided in our lives. And we thank you for allowing to be here on your appointed times once again to honor you and glorify you and be those shining lights, those ambassadors you can call us out to be. We thank you for this opportunity once again, and we ask you all this in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Okay. After Okay. All right. Very good. Um, at this time, brethren, we're going to get our, have our announcements given today. The announcements will be given by John Shavers. And the choir's going to stay up here. Not there. Okay, she doesn't want No, we, we normally let the choir stay up here, but we're not doing the announcements. They're so short anyway, so you still have your schedule. Hold on to them because uh, we are going to announce, I think Ed announced it a, a couple of days ago or uh, yesterday, that today is the last day we're going to have services here until Sunday. And then tomorrow, we'll have it at the building we ate in yesterday. That's the normal church building. All of those that went over there and ate, you know where it is, 4923 Prospect. And that's where we're going to have services tomorrow. Same time, and tomorrow the Sabbath, we'll have double services. But it'll be in our normal meeting building tomorrow. And that's why I wanted to get up here. And I don't think there are any great announcements to give other than we have... Uh, See Sid Romero, there he is right there. Sid, how many do you have anyone for the variety and the talent show? Uh, I've got a couple so far. We're looking forward to having more. <laughs> and, <laughs> <laughs> this is, um, uh, in fact, if, you are, if we don't have a two, they, they got the, they'll have the two whole show for a whole hour. So get the 30 minutes apiece. Yeah, <laughs> but, but, the, but do plan on the variety show and what we normally have. We'll have the variety, we'll have, uh, we call Bible Bowl. Uh, some of the members here know what we do. Uh, before the variety and talent show, we'll have questions. Uh, uh, I'll have questions. 
and we're going to ask you, and when you raise your hand, give an answer, we have a nice prize for you, and we'll have about 15 to 20 prizes, I'm sure. Some will be hard questions, some will be easy. Like one may be, where is the word of God? No, that's not. It's in the Bible, no other book. I hope you know that. It's not in any other book. It's in the Bible, but that's not one of the questions. But, <laughs> but do have that on your mind there because of, um, and then the talent show will follow that. And so we're going to be here a long time that, that evening when we have that, which is the uh, fourth day of the feast, which is Sunday evening. We'll have the Bible Bowl and Variety and Talent Show, and it'll be right in this room right here. Uh, I can't think of anything else other than make sure you go over to the tomorrow at our building where we ate. Don't come back here. This room, we could not get it for today, and we will have to clear everything out or whomever is using it, then we'll have to come back in Saturday night and set it back up again. But that is a key thing right there. And so get over there and park in the back of the building because of the, we have a parking area in the back and, and the uh, construction seminars. They, won't, they will not be having classes on the Sabbath, so we'll have a whole back parking lot and you can come in the back door and we'll have the services there. It'll be double services, 10.30, and at 2.30. And back to the song leader now. Thank you, John. Choir, if you'd like to come on up, please. Brethren, we'll be singing page 18. I'm sorry, it's, uh, in the brown book, it's 11. and the blue book, it's page 80. The song is uh, Come to the Feast. Come to the Feast. Brown book, 11. Blue book, 80. If you please rise. Okay, 11. All right. Oops. I'm a little lost here. If you give me a moment, this is showing me 11, and that's not what I have. Come to the feast, yes. Okay, got it. We're good. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer.
And now we're blessed to have special um, special reading. I'm sorry, there we go. Uh, scripture reading, I'm sorry. Uh, scripture reading is to be done by Yolanda Miranda. I will be reading Hebrews chapter 4. Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. For For we which have believed to enter into rest... As he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he spake in a certain day, in a certain place, sorry, of the seventh day on this wise. And God did rest the seventh day from all his works. And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest. Seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein. And they, to whom it was first preached, entered not in because of unbelief. Again, he limiteth a certain day, saying in David, Today, after so long a time, as it is said, Today, if, we, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. For if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? There remaineth there a rest of a rest to the people of God. For he that entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works, as God did from his. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. For the word of God is quick and powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and it is a discerner of thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him whom we have to do. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our, our profession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with, the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points in all points tempted, like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. I'll be reading Hebrews chapter five. For every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men in things pertaining to God, that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sin, who can have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are out of the way, for that he himself also is compassed with infirmity. And by reason hereof he ought, as for the people, so also for himself to offer for sin. And no man taketh this honor unto himself, but he that is called our God as was Aaron. So also Christ glorified not himself to be made an an high priest, but he that said unto him, Thou art my son, today have I begotten thee. As he saith also in another place, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayer and supplications, with strong crying and tears unto him that he that was able to save him from death and was heard in that he feared. Though he were a son, yet he learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Called of God a high priest after the order of Melchizedek, <laughs> of whom... We have many things to say, and hard to be uttered, 
seeing ye are dull of hearing. For when all the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principle of the or oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For everyone that useth milk is unsilkful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them who are full of age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to disconcern both good and evil. Well, brethren, as you can tell, I can only see half of what's going on. Yolanda, thank you. Camila, I didn't know you were on the page. <laughs> so thank you, Camila, very much. Appreciate you so much. All right. Brethren, we're going to have a couple of more hymns. If you would, please rise, and then we'll be blessed with special music after that. So for now, we're going to go ahead and um, open our books to... I can read the special music. Uh, on the brown book, it'll be page 17. The blue book, page 16. We'll be singing, God Will See Us Through. All right. Thank you, choir. Once again, on the brown book, page 17, blue book, page 16, God will see us through. into is uh, uh, page 14 in the brown book, page 47 in the blue book. That's 14 in the brown, 47 in the blue. We'll be singing, Come Thou Almighty King. Yeah. 
Please, you may sit down. Choir, thank you once again. Once again, brethren, we're very blessed to have special music today. Special music by Joan Osborne. She'll be introducing the song. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Oh, it's not a Sabbath, but happy feast. Um, this morning I'll be singing the song Strangers Here Below. It was written by Mark Graham. Some men. 
Beautiful, Joan. Thank you. Thank you so much. Another, another round of applause, please. Thank you, Joan. All right. Well, brethren, we're blessed with today's sermon. Today's sermon to be given by Pastor John Shavers. Is there anyone out there that can remember 1985? Yes. I don't mean that you're 85, but do you remember 1985? Well, I have something to tell you. In 1985, I was working for a company here in Albuquerque. I went to lunch. I came back, 
And about uh, 2 or 3 o'clock, I began to feel my throat. I've had throat problems all of my life. I been, began to feel my throat getting very sore, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock. And at 5, I could not hardly breathe. My vocal cords, I didn't want to move to breathe because they were hurting so painfully. This was a day before the last day of unleavened bread. And so I, Phil was speaking that afternoon, and I was speaking that morning. And I went home. I didn't tell my wife. And I, I spoke to Irene, and I went back to my office, and I knelt down before the eternal God. I would never forget this. And as I prayed, that pain started to, to just dissipating. It's going away. I couldn't hardly breathe. It was hurting so badly. When I came out of that room, I had no soul throat, no pain at all. I asked God, may I speak on this subject tomorrow? I'm asking you to turn to the book of Songs of Solomon. And God gave me the ability to speak on the Songs of Solomon. I'm just going to read one verse out of Songs of Solomon. And we'll start in Songs of Solomon 2 and verse 15. Songs of Solomon, verse, this is chapter 2 and verse 15. We don't hear this book very often. We don't hear it probably about once or twice every leap year. I'm just going to use one verse. The verse is, verse 15 in Songs of Solomon 1, I mean 2. Take us, the foxes, and the little foxes that spoil the vines, for our vines have tender grapes. So what is that? That's a parable in the song here that Abishag was writing and Solomon was writing and talking and they, they were put down to words. This is his wife. And the word, the, the better translation is, let us catch the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vineyard, for our vines have tender grapes. That is saying she was saying, you, Solomon, and Solomon was saying to her, you, Abishaka, let us get rid of those little foxes in our marriage, the vineyard. They come in and they cause problems. They cause headaches. Little foxes are not sins. Little foxes are in, in little in idiosyncrasies that we do that irritate and bother our mates, our husbands, our wives. And I'm going to give you some of them right here. It's a decision by both of them. Let us get rid of these little problems before they become big problems. There's no adultery. There's no stealing, no, no beating on her or anything like that. But there are little things that men and women have done and do. There are little foxes in the vineyard. And she said the tender grapes. We have sensitive areas. Women have little sensitive things. Men have little sensitive things. And a partner at times would come in there and let a little fox come in there and, and nibble on it. Nibble on it. And then you got a, a hard feelings there in the home. Marriages shouldn't be that way. And so she's saying and he's saying, let us catch those little foxes. I'm going to give you an example of some of the little foxes that, that are happening in our homes and among men and women. Those that are married, and those that are not married, and those that, in a sense, don't want to be married, you still need to hear this. You ever heard of mummering? God said Israel was mummering. Do you know what that means? Mummering is, that is, I'm going to give you an example. Irene went into a store here in the city. They had a sale on. You could get two turkey hams for the price of one. And so she went into the baker, uh, meat cutting area, and this man came out, can I help you? And she said, I'd like to have one of those two for one uh, buys. And he walked away saying, two for one, two for one. I'll be glad when this sale is open. It's open. I'll be glad when this sale is over. That's murmuring. That's when you speak out loud to yourself, but you're speaking to the person. That's what it is. You speak out loud. Your mama, oh, I'm two for one. I'll be glad when this sale is over. And see, Irene can't say, what did you say to me? I didn't say anything to you. I was talking to myself. That's mummering. God told Israel, I hear you mummering in your tents. They are saying things behind God's back. They thought 
but he heard it. He said, I hear what you're saying. That's a fox in a marriage. It's not a sin. It's disrespect, but it's not a sin against the woman or against the man. And that's what he did to her. And she, she couldn't go to the manager and say, this man said this to me. But he said it to her in a roundabout way, murmuring as, she, as he walked away. Another one is, Irene and I were walking one day. And we were on one side of the street, and a lady on the other side of the street had her dog. And she yelled over, hey, uh, can my dog come over and smell you? And we said, no. No. And what does she do? Uh, Pe 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 Pepe, they don't want to, she's talking loud. Pepe, they don't want you to, don't want to smell, they want you to smell them. She said it, I could hear it across the street. That's murmuring. She said it to the dog, to us. That those are little foxes in a marriage. Those are little foxes that get in and they come in and those are tender areas. People don't like to be murmured to. Did you know that? That's disrespectful. Those are things that what he was talking about here. And that's what I asked God, may I speak on this. That was in 1985. And here's another one. A married couple. She said, oh, he doesn't love me like he used to, talking to the elders. He doesn't love me like he used to. What happened? The man blurted it out. It's the dog. Why? I don't like to kiss. I don't want to kiss my wife when the dog has licked her face and her lips. That is a fox in the vineyard. She has to make a decision between the dog licking her lips and kissing her face and then he coming in and after that and kissing her. He, wouldn't, he didn't want to do it. There's no sin, no adultery, is there? No. No stealing, no lying, no. But those are little foxes. That's what that's talking about. He said, let us catch those foxes out of it. Get rid of that. The dog has to go or either the kissing has to go. One of them. May my dog come up and smell you? No. Oh, they don't want you to smell them. <laughs> talking to us across the street, we can hear this as plain and clear, talking that loud to a dog. That's mummering. You say it loud to yourself or to something else or that person. And those are little foxes in a marriage. There are some other ones also. That Irene worked in the purse, purse and, purses and hosiery department in a store here in Albuquerque, J.C. Penney's. Husband and wife walked up there, and they were getting ready to buy a Christmas present, apparently, for, their, for her mother. And uh, those purses cost more than, they don't cost $39.99, your purses, uh, uh, Stone Mountain, Dooney's. And she was looking at one, she got to a Stone Mountain, I think Irene said, oh, look at this, and looks so, uh, 200 and uh, 250. She said, I think this, I think this would be good for my, for my mom. The husband looked over, your mom is not worth that much. Guess what? That's a sensitive. She, he, didn't, he didn't hit her. He didn't curse her. He just said, your mom is not worth that much. Her mom was very important. That's a fox in the vineyard. Now, he should have said, we can afford it or we can't afford it. We said, she's not worth that much, hitting against his mother-in-law. Those are foxes in the vineyard that you need to get rid of, and your home will run smoothly. Have you tried this one? Call someone. Uh, Betty Joe. Next room. She hears you. Betty Joe. Betty Joe. Yes. I'm going to make you call me twice. I'm going to control this situation. That's what it is. That's a fox in the vineyard. You already say yes. Henry. Yes. Henry. Henry. Uh, uh huh. Just slap that person in the face. Didn't touch them. That's a fox in the vineyard. She said, let's catch those out. We don't need those foxes in our vineyard. See, I did it to my father. And I, I, I feel bad now because I was a stupid young 12, 13-year-old kid watching TV. My father put in eight to nine hours a day working at a sawmill, at a, a, made whiskey barrels. Then he would come home at night with a drop light out in the middle of the night working on people's cars, their brakes. 
especially the brakes and the carburetor and the halt that generated back in those days, out there in the cold. I'm watching gun smoke, you know, watching TV. I hear him say, John. I hear him, I know, I can know his voice right now. And he died in 1990. I hear him say, John. I'm watching TV. Now I get up and I go towards the door. Now he's getting up now. He's, he's coming towards the house. John, I run out the door. He said, then you hear me call you? I said, yes, and jump in the car. No. And he, he said, pump the brakes. I, he, need me, he was bleeding the brakes. He needed me to pump them up, and then you do whatever. You let the air out or whatever. I didn't know what that was. But I made him call me two times. I heard him the first time. I just ignored him. And he was coming after me the second call. He was walking towards the house then. And then I run out the door like I needed him to take a tree limb. And wow, across my back. I would have heard him the first time. See, that's a little fox in the vineyard. I didn't hear what, I heard it, but I made them call me the third time, the second time. I made them do this. That is what Abishagag was, and Solomon was talking about here. Let's catch out these little foxes because they hit the little sensitive tender grapes and they ruined them. They ruined a marriage for a week or two weeks over not answering a call. Men, women, we can't have that in the people of God. We don't play games. Those are games. Why would you play games like that with your wife or your husband and make them call you and call you? We have to get rid of these little foxes or they will turn into big foxes. I mean, turn into bears and lions and tigers. Let's go to the book of Genesis 1. If you understand marriage, what God did those foxes will become somewhat less available. I'm going to read Genesis 1 and verse 26 and 28. Go back, always go back to the beginning and you'll learn something. Genesis 1 and verse 26 and verse 28. This is, this is Elohim speaking here. And God said, and Elohim said, let us make man in our image after, after our likeness and let them, and let them have dominion, who of them, male and female, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he, him, male and female created he, them. This is pre-sin. He created man and woman to have dominion together. Together, co-regents, together. You don't make her call you or make him call you two or three times. Why are you doing that? Why you don't, oh, I just wish, you're just mumbling as you walk away from someone. Just you got something to say, say it to them. Or either keep it to yourself. Because God created man in the very beginning to have dominion and woman to have dominion. They were equal. Let's go back to... Philippians 2 and verse 6. Philippians 2 and verse 6. Well, something is going to happen here. A, a fox is going to get into the garden. Philippians 2 and verse 6. One verse takes care of how God started things and how Elohim really is. One verse. Here it is. Verse 6 in, in the Philippians. Who, speaking of the Christ, who being in the form, that word is morphe, morphe of God, thought it not a robbery to be equal with God. They were equal, 100 and 100. And he created man, 100 and 100 for the man and woman. That's what he said. Give them dominion over the earth. Them, both of them. Give both of them. And God's going to get it back to that. It's not their way right now, but he's going to get it back to where it was. Now, let's go over also now to the book of Genesis again, Genesis. See, they started off doing real good, real good, ruling together, having dominion together. Like, like Elohim, they have 100 and 100 and 100% 100 of power. Genesis 2 and verses 18. This is the one that men have had a problem with a lot. And men, we can't have this, and women also. Genesis 2 and verse 18, 
And, and the Lord God, the eternal Elohim, said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a help meeting fitting for him. See, there it is. He's going to make a maid. He's going to make a chauffeur. No. No. Take the correct translation of that. Read it the way it should be. I will make him an aid, a protector, corresponding to him. Suited to him. He made males and females, and the woman is the only thing that is corresponding with the man. Not the dog, not the cat, not the fish. That is not your family. Your family is a woman, a man. They correspond together. You don't correspond with the horse. That lady across the street, oh, I am my dog. I don't want you to kiss, you know, smell them and all. I don't correspond to a dog. You try to embrace a dog, then try to embrace a woman or a man. See, it's different. You try that. I know you've tried it. You, which one would you rather embrace? The dog or the horse or the mule or your wife or your husband? She corresponds with you. A few, few different changes. You all know that. But as a whole, there's nothing that corresponds with man other than a man, man, male and female. You find a birds, fish, whatever you want to find. They do not correspond to you. You're in the very image, in the very likeness, in the figure of God Almighty. And there's no one that corresponds with him. No one. Other than Elohim. The seraphims don't. The cherubims do not. They don't. We haven't seen the other beings that he's created. They, 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 they're great. They're powerful. He spoke and they came into being. But there's only one thing that God said he made. He made a woman to make him, uh, make, to make him and it says, a help. And they, oh, help me, help me. No, it's not that. It doesn't mean that. It means to protect to aid the person, to do things for them, and to help them, which corresponds with man. A dog, a cat, chicken, fish do not, and birds do not correspond with any man, any woman. You, you, I had, we've had birds, Tweety Bird, we call it. All birds are Tweety Birds. <laughs> we've had fish. I've had three German shepherds, one dachshund. Not one of them corresponded with me. They didn't correspond with my wife. I correspond with her. God gave us dominion. Don't take your wife and your husband and let those little foxes get in there and cause hard feelings in your family. It makes your life feel bad. You don't want to go to work. You don't want to go talk to people. Why? Wait until you get that joy of being there. And I know some of you out there, you're widows and widowers. Some are young. Some are married right now. When your marriage and your wife and your husband, you're all, all together smiling, everything looks better, doesn't it? Not your dog. I like my dog. I had Simba. Train him in one day. I trained him out there sitting. I could hit my leg around in front of the house and boom, he sit. I mean, he trained like, a, like he had been trained like a professional. I could, he could, I could just train him. I laid it to him and said, You can train that German shepherd. Right quick, I did it in a few hours. Had him train to kneel, hit, what everything I wanted him to do. But my wife corresponds to me, not Simba, a Kano, my dog that died, a Bawana, my other dog, was a dog catcher got him. <laughs> this is very important because we are looking forward to, and we are looking at a world right now. They need to see marriages very badly. You know that. We sit on TV and watch all of this, I don't know, males or females and castrations and all the stuff they're doing to people. Oh, that's so bad, that's so bad. The only thing that you can do, brethren, you correspond with your wife, you correspond with your, 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 your husband, and you hold one another, and you help one another, you provoke one another. People take that dog, attaboy, 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 that's rubbing, rubbing. Oh, that attaboy, attaboy, I'm kissing him. Do you do your wife? Oh, I don't do my wife like that. Why? Well, when you get over here, harsh words towards her and harsh words towards him. Never say attaboy. Never say a girl. Why not? You do it to him. You do it to the cat. You put the 
cover over the little Tweety Bird in the cage and take it off. He sings and doesn't sing. But you don't do it to someone who's in the image, have dominion over this earth with you. And God said, you are to have this. This is what they were talking about. Let's get rid of these little foxes in our vineyard. Get rid of them because it leads to bigger problems. And that will cause, and not the person who go out and commit adultery, but it does push them apart. And God meant for us to be together. You try embracing again. You try to embrace a horse. Can't embrace him, can you? Embrace your wife. Feels good, doesn't it? Embrace your husband. Feels good, doesn't feel those shoulders, feel that chest, feel the body. I've, I had dogs. I didn't embrace them and kiss on them, but I would rather embrace them. No dog, no wife, no horse can match my wife. And in your life the same way. So don't tell yourself out the dif- difference. I don't care who it is. I don't care who it is. Genesis 3 and verse 14. Here we are now. We're going to go after the sin. Verse 14 through 17. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, after they've sinned, because you have done this, this, you are cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon your belly shall you go, and dust shall you eat all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and, the, and her seed, he, that word it there is not it, is he, he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. You know what that's a prophecy of there. We talked about doing uh, uh, trumpets, Christ coming back to rule, and what is he going to do? He's going to, it says, slay in the word of smite, Leviathan. That you bit him on the hill, you, you had him crucified, sure. Through Pontius Pilate, you hit him on the hill, that hurt him. Yeah, that hurt. But he's going to, your head. He's going to do that to your head. You want to rob me bitten on your hill, I have your head smashed. <laughs> the devil knows that scripture right there. I guarantee you he knows it. That's why that's going to be the battle of Armageddon. And those spirits and those human beings working together to fight against Christ. You read that. Spirits going out, bring the kings in there, and they're going to fight against Christ. The book of Daniel says, they shall mingle with the seed of men. The devil is going to have his army out there too, fighting Jesus Christ because he knows that is coming. And so this is what happened right here. Listen to this. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrows. And word there is sorriness. It's not sorrow. It has a... Men, watch this, and women, you know this. Maybe not in certain degree, so much in some people, but the woman worries about the child more than the man does. Oh, he'll be all right. No, no, no. I'm going to multiply your worries. My mother, my father, I don't think he ever said anything to me. My mother, John, you know, do this. You know, she, she worried about me and my sister and my other brother. My father just looking. <laughs> he, he cared about us. He fed us and took good care of us and protected us. But now you're going to have more worries. Why? Because sin is going to be in the world, and you're going to be worried about your son and your daughter more than a husband will. And that does happen. You shall bring forth, that is, uh, uh, in con- sorrow and your conception, that means to be pregnant, in sorrow that, that br- you bring, shall bring forth children, and your desire, you'll be reaching out to your husband. He shall rule over you. This is post-sin. Pre-sin didn't say that, did it? He shall rule over you. We are going through a curse right now. And we don't need to add to that curse by allowing those little foxes in our marriages, in our homes, because they will explode. The reason why I wanted to speak on this on the days of unleavened bread, I was talking about a little leavening leavens the whole lump. I'm sticking on it now doing the Feast of Tabernacles because we're looking forward to what Joan was singing about here, some, a greater time. The question was asked, will we be married in the kingdom? No, you won't be married. Married when you die, your marriage is annulled. Do you want to work with your partner that you had for 30 or 40 years? That will be up to you and your partner. 
however God does it. I don't know how it's going to be. He just said they knew I'm married or given marriage in the kingdom. But right now is what we are concerned about. Those little foxes getting in there are nibbling away at those sensitive areas. Women have a sensitive area. Men have sensitive areas. And they get in there and they little foxes come in there, ignore the person, or do little things to them. They know it getting next to them. They know that. They know it. You know it, don't you, men? Yeah, women, don't you know? You know that. Don't, the Bible says don't lie against the truth. You know certain things bother people. You know that. Like I said, I've I seen a lot of look-alikes, and I saw this uh, Lou Ferrigno look-alike. Now, I didn't know whether to tell him or not he looks like Lou Ferrigno because Lou Ferrigno doesn't, <laughs> he's not on GQ. <laughs> so, so I looked at him in the morning, and yeah, he, I kept it to myself, and, and I waited for him to say something. He never said it. I was there two weeks with him and never told him, <laughs> you look like Lou Ferrigno. He, he, looked, he was big, too, just like Lou. Lifted weights. <laughs> he could have been his twin. And I, I didn't, and who wants to look like Lou Ferrigno? I, I don't think they, so I kept my mouth closed. That may have been a little sensitive to him. You don't know that people say, you look like so-and-so. What do you mean? Because they may not like that person. You know, I've seen that happen. You look like so-and-so. Oh, don't tell me that. So you, you, let's go to Proverbs. No, I'm not going to go to Proverbs. 1 Peter 3, this is the one, 1 Peter 3 and verse 6. This is something that we need to look at when it comes to that lady or that man in the house with you that you've devoted yourself to and you want to put in, put in those little foxes in there to try to get a little leverage on them or maneuver them. Don't do that. 1 Peter 3 and verse 6 through 7. I'm cutting in on Peter here. Oh, yes. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord whose daughters you are as long as you do well and are not afraid with any amazement. Likewise, you husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, given, given honor unto the wife as unto a weaker vessel and as being heirs together of the grace of life that your prayers be not hindered. This is from God Almighty. He says, the knowledge that you have about her, the knowledge that you have about him, live according to that knowledge. And weaker vessel means, you're, they have this trouble now with these Olympics, aren't they? Men swimmers against women swimmers. Those women can't beat those men. I don't, they don't have any weightlifting yet. Men are just stronger and tougher. Their muscles are bigger. There are very few women going to get out there and really <laughs> beat men all up. Ali didn't fight any women. He was bad. No women fight. So there is a, there is not a weakness, but there is a less strength in most women than there are for men. And so you understand that. And so you could do the, hev the heavy work and the heavy lifting. But it says, honor your wife as a weaker vessel. And he says, live with her according to the grace of life. Live with her according to the knowledge you have because you are heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Two things. Who wants their prayers to be hindered? Don't raise your hand because no hands will go up. Who wants to say, I want to pray and I don't want God to answer it? Well, why are you praying? Well, no, 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 you don't do that. You want answers. But it says here also, you are, you are heirs together of the grace of life. That is, whatever you receive, she receives. Whatever she receives, you receive. Whatever comes into your house, you receive it, she receives it. You have it together. That's the grace that God gives you in this life. This is not talking about eternal life. You can't save your husband. You can't save your wife. But you can look at your house and say, as things come in, these are ours. This is what we have. This is what we're going to do. You find that, and I've, I've talked to men and I've talked to other people. It's so good at times to just see what comes in and how things are done in the home. Everything belongs to us, and we, we distribute it to the children, takes care of the children. We counsel, or, well, I did. And, and Feast of Tabernacles one year, and I won't tell you this place. This man came, and he was all weary, sitting and weary, and he had married a, a woman in the church. They were married, both in the church. And he said, 
I'm the stepfather, so okay, that's fine. I'm, that, it's her child. When you, I know that. And, 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 and things I tell him to do, she come in and say not to do. Things I say not to do, she, she says she does. Them. Wait, wait, wait. I said, what? You mean right in front of the child? You say, son, don't do that. And she said, no, he can do that. So son, do this. No, he doesn't have to do it. Right in front? Yeah. And he was, well, what am I? I said, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. You and her got to go into a private room. And you all get things straight there. And then you all raise that child. You can't raise a child going left and right, up and down, yes and no, because you're fighting there. They're not fighting physically, but that's a fox in the vineyard. That's a fox in the vineyard, and the child will take advantage of it. And then you and your wife are going to be saying, well, why do you do that? Well, I thought, I thought, I thought. Now you all are getting into it there in the, in, in the other room. And the child can hear it sometimes. To this day, brethren, I remember the first fight I've noticed in my mother and father. I remember this is plain. I was sitting at the dining room table. My sister was there. My brother wasn't born then. Sitting there, and they got into an argument. I was about five, six. I wasn't even in school, and I remember that fight. Not physical fight. They were arguing over something, and I wanted them to stop. What did I do? I ran over. I remember this. I ran over and said, my hand, my hand is hurting. I was trying to get between my hand, my hand. My father was looking at me. She was looking. I was trying to get him apart because I thought, that, you know, I didn't know. They were, I see they were getting at it, you know, not physically, but arguing. And I put my hand, my hand, my hand, trying to stop them. You have something to say, say it privately about your child, with your wife in private or with your husband. Don't argue for the children because they can see that. I remember that in my mind right now. I can see the room, the door, where they were standing. I was, I know I was not in first grade. I was less than six years old. And they were arguing about, I don't know what they were arguing about. But I tried to get my hand up and say, stop, no, my hand, my hand wasn't hurting. If I could have five or six year old, I know a 14, 15, 18 year old person can see it. And there was a fox in the vineyard. They were arguing right in front of the family there. My sister and me, she was five years older than me. She understood it. I didn't. So learn how to realize that you are, you are heirs together of the grace of life, this life. That's our money, our car, our home, our this. And we work together. Marriage is becoming obsolete. I'm Irene and I said, we're tired of watching all these pro. Oh, that's his fiance. Two years, three years, fiance. When are you going to get married? Fiance. Oh, he's got two kids. Fiance. Well, when are you going to get married? Because they see some of the marriages that are around them. They say, I don't want that. And so they figure, I'm not going to be committed to her, committed to him. I'm just going to play it loose. <laughs> it's going to hang it loose there, you know, loose. Lucy, goosey. They need to see a man and a woman that embrace and love them, love each other, sacrifice them, become completely committed. I don't use the word love in my marriage ceremony. Did you notice that? I've seen it when I read the scriptures, yes. But I don't talk, oh, he loves her, she loved him. I use the word commit. You commit yourself to that person. They are committed to one another. They are committed to her, committed to him. Because you're going to hit some bumps. A fox may get into the vineyard sometimes. You better be committed to that man or that woman. The grass may be look green on the other side, and it may be. They said it isn't. I know, oh, it isn't, but it may be. It may be greener. Men know what that means. Women know what that means. I've seen men and women look at the greener grass. This lady said, I like men with big shoulders. She came back, she was talking uh, with my, on a coffee break. The queen of the office there, we want to date her. We want to date her. She knew it, and she said, I like men with big shoulders, wide shoulders. She was talking to the cute guy there. The women said, oh, he's so cute. And I was just sitting there and I said, hey, uh, Betty Ann, did you, you meet Carl? She said, yes, but he's married. She knew that. That was back in, in the late 70s. <laughs> and she married a man with big shoulders. She didn't marry Carl because he was married. She didn't, I never saw her say or do anything to him at all. Because she liked men with wide shoulders were fine. She found no one. Not Carl. Carl's married to someone else. Today, it's not quite that way. 
Keep those foxes out of your vineyard. 1 Corinthians 12 and verse, 1 Corinthians 7. This is a sermon that I gave in 1985, and I, I, I really believe that God healed me of that throat problem because I've had throat problems all of my life mostly. So I could speak that day, and this, this wasn't planned, one of my sermons planned for this feast, but I said, I, I think I'll speak on it. 1 Corinthians 7 and verse 12. This will change your life. Get those foxes out of the vineyard, the little things that really that's touchy, touchy, touchy. 1 Corinthians 7 and verse 12. But to the rest I speak, listen to this, but to the rest speak I, not the Lord. Paul is saying this is not from Jesus Christ, not from the scriptures, it's from me, what I think. If any brother has a wife that believes not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. They had some marriage problems there in the Corinthian church. They had four types of marriages in Corinth. Four types. The rich had the kinds that we have with the flowers and the bouquet, you know, made of, made of art and all of those were the rich people. Down to the poor, the slaves, the man would take a child, my mom said, this is your wife. He had the official power to do that. So said, well, I didn't want to marry her. No, that's your wife. That's your wife. And Paul is saying, okay, the city or the state, the nation or whatever it is, gave him power to do that. That is your wife because they have official power from God. God sets up governments. It's bad what they did, but he let it be set up. And they, when they got, became members of the church, they said, I don't want to marry her. He said, he said, don't put her away. That's what he's saying. Watch this. Why? <clears throat> Verse 14, for the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean, but now they are holy. So you have a power from God that affects that man's life. Or you have a power from God that affects her life, and you leave, you take away a blessing out of her life. You take a blessing out of the children. Stay there. It doesn't, doesn't mean fight and do all of those things and not, you know, physically, but stay there because you sanctify those children. They are holy. A believer sanctifies his children by being holy. God looks upon your child the way he doesn't look upon the child over here. That's what the scripture says. And you do things for your husband Said, well, I, he doesn't believe the way I believe. Get out of here. Don't, you don't, don't do that. My, my wife doesn't believe what I believe. Get out of here. Don't do that. If she wants to go, she can go. But don't you send her away because you sanctify her and there are some benefits in her life that you can give her. This is one thing. I wonder why the people of God, and a lady came and started a meeting with us years ago. She said, why do the people of God have problems and troubles? And the first thing they do is they stop attending Sabbath services. I don't know. That person has to answer that for me. I, I, they got to answer it themselves. That's where you need to be. You need to be around the saints of God. You need that Holy Spirit power around you when you have hard times. You know, I'm going to run away from it. What if the Says the devil deceived the whole world. He has a lap, the world in his lap. He just swings us around. Oh, this is so much fun. Go, 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 go. And I can almost promise you, 99% of the time, that and more things will come in. You're going away from the power of God. Never go away from the power of God. Never. And we laugh at Barack and Deborah. When she said, go to war, and he said, I'll go if you go with me. So, oh, he was, yeah, he's laughing. At, Whoa, that man was smart. She was a prophetess of God. God's spirit was in her. He was working with her. You want to be around a person like that, or you want to be around someone Satan is working in? Who do you, who you want? This world is perverted. You know it's perverted. It's sick. I go to the world. It's fun out here. Yes, it is. Well, what about how are you spiritually growing? Well, we dig a well. If a man is married to a woman, he said, and she wants to stay with you, and she, you believe and she doesn't, let her stay. Don't put her away because she gets some good benefits from God because of you. Think about that to your family. Think about that to your children. 
Think about that when you want to let those little foxes come in. If you are a godly man and she's a godly woman, that fox in there, you can get him out of there. She calls you, John. Say, yes. Betty Ann. Yes, John. Betty Ann. Betty Ann. Betty. Mm-hmm. It's a fox. It's a fox in the garden. It's a fox right in the vineyard. It's a fox in the vineyard. I want to show you another scripture here. No, I won't say this. I, I just, I think I've told this before. We had, in this company I worked for, had an executive interview. Once or twice a year, they would ask, you know, do you want to go in and talk to the, so you have an immediate manager, a, a, a manager over him, and the big man, the big shot, the executive manager. And every once in a while, they ask an employee, you want to go talk to the executive manager? Mm, and I, you all said, no, no, no. Well, one week, said, John, name was Gene, Gene called me, John, do you want to have an executive interview with the executive? I said, no, yeah, yeah. I started to say no, because it's volunteer. Okay, okay, it's Tuesday at 3 o'clock. I said, okay. So after I went in the office at Tuesday at 3 o'clock. He had cleared his desk. The desk was clear. He said, come on in, John. I sat down in front of him. And I said, I, I don't, I said, I, don't, I really don't have any gripes or any complaints. He was a lookalike to George to Ford, President Ford. I didn't tell him that either. But, and he said, <laughs> he said, John, we don't have to make this a gripe session. This is a big company. We do some things right. Let's talk about some of those. That changed the whole atmosphere. Let's talk about some of the things we do right. He said, how do you like your manager? I like a good manager. Your pay? I said, yes, my pay was double what the average person was making. How do you work? I said, my, I worked by a big window. I, we just talked real good about the things I liked. You, you're not going to find 100%. I could have picked on a lot of the foxes, you know. Well, the air conditioner over my desk is a little too, a little too cold, cool for me and all of that. You know? And all, and, yeah, and the floor in the room. And, uh, so what? Let's pass over those. You, your pay is good. Your manager is good. You're sitting in a good position. You have all your coverage. You work in a good company. You can retire from it. And he said, let's talk about some of the things we do good. As I mentioned a few minutes ago, people tell their dog, attaboy, 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 attaboy. I've seen people, attaboy, and the dog, that wagging his tail. They start looking at their wife. What, what are you doing now? Oh, his wife is not an attaboy. Her husband, he's not an attaboy. That's my husband. Oh, that's why. That's my wife. One man said, well, she would do in a pinch. You know, he was jokingly, but he didn't say it loud enough for her to hear it. And someone got a little upset at him. That wasn't, you know, said, you got a good wife. Well, she would do in a pinch. I don't know if he told her that to her face or not. He may have been pinched. If she, <laughs> but <laughs> this is talking about, let's go over and, and cover this. Now, here's one, Revelation 22, showing you what God is going to do with women and men, husbands and wives. Revelation 22 and verse 12. And this, the title of the sermon is Little Foxes in the Vineyard. Little things that we do that we can stop doing them today, this minute, this same hour, before you get home, before you get to the apartment, wherever you are, you can stop doing some of those things that quickly. That's overcoming, brethren. That's growing. Revelation 22 and verse 12, this is, here, yes, here it is, Revelation 22 and verse 12. And be, I'm going to start a little earlier. Verse 11, he that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He which is filthy, let him be filthy still. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. This is Christ's return. There's a time he's going to say it's time to go back. <laughs> well, whatever, he's come, I'm coming back at this certain time. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give to every man according to his works what they shall be. God made man, male, and female. Women are not going to get a less reward because they are women. And men get a greater because they're a man. He started off with man and woman having dominion together. 
Sin got in there and messed things all up. We can unmess a lot of that stuff in our homes, in our marriages today, because I can promise you there are going to be some women that have higher and greater positions and rule over more than some men. Paul mentions, the only place he mentions someone's name in the book of life, he mentions two women. So they labor, they labor in Christ. What are the husbands doing? I've seen this in the church. I've seen women that labored night and day. And the man sitting around his hands in his pocket. Oh, oh what is it? Oh, okay, I, I say, let's see. And they're running, <laughs> burning the candle at both ends. And you think God doesn't see that? And then and when he rewards people, he says, oh, well, you're a woman. Okay, get over here in just a few minutes. I'll get to you. Oh, come on in here, man. Oh, yeah, you got all right. <laughs> no. He's going to reward everyone, male, female, Jew, Gentile, whatever you were, according to what you have done with what you have today. And he has a book on you. He has a book on every one of us in here. God, he does? Yes, he does. He has a book on everyone. He knows you. He knows you very well. And he's going to reward everyone according to their works. I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to tell you when I asked this question, what happened when I asked this in 1988 at the Feast of Tabernacles. I spoke on marriage there. You could hear a pin drop. I asked this question in the whole room was quiet. People even almost stopped breathing. And most of them just stared straight ahead. I'm going to ask this question. If you found out today when you're receiving the mail from the county office saying that you are not married to your spouse. You never have been married. You are a single man or a single woman. Would you marry that person again? Thank you, John. <clears throat> Choir, if you'd come on up, please. We're going to have one more closing hymn to be followed by closing prayer. I'm going to ask Mike Anderson for that closing prayer. We're going to be in the brown book. It'll be page 23. In the blue book, it'll be page 73. The title of the hymn is, I Know Whom I Have Believed. Once again, the brown book, that's page 23. The blue book, page 73. I know whom I have believed. Persuaded that he is able.
Father in heaven, we close this holy worship service on this day of the Feast of Tabernacles, and we are very, very blessed and thankful for this time before your throne and this time together, assembled together, <clears throat> and encouraging and strengthening one another in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we ask you, Father, that you watch over and keep us all safe the rest of this day as we go about and... and and enjoy our times with our wives and husbands and families and friends that you keep us safe. We also want to pray for our dear friend Ed Costanza, who is not feeling well today and wasn't able to attend services. We put him before your throne. And we thank you, Father, and we ask your blessing on the rest of it this day on this beautiful, during this beautiful Feast of Tabernacles. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. Amen. Yes. 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 Yes.